and somebody has to do it, so that's great. But one of the uh, one of the uh, solutions that we've kind of thought of is to have multiple counselors for um, each class. And I don't know if that's like a A through D, you know, like uh, how your last name is. But a lot of students uh, downstairs were saying that when they they can't really just show up, they have to make an appointment, and sometimes they feel like they'd want like maybe a free period or something where they could just really talk to somebody about an issue they're having besides an issue of, I want to change my class, because that seems like what most people go to the counselor for. Um, and also there were issues with uh, some students weren't getting the message of like getting help for later down the road. Like during high school, uh, you'll kind of, like at my school we had a four year plan where freshmen, you, as a freshman, you make your class selections for the like entire four years. And as a freshman, you don't really know what, I mean, if you know what you're gonna do, that's a great plan. You'll, you'll be set up and prepared for further education. But I think we also maybe need to have something where more for like helping them to get into college and like maybe some other alternative methods. And I feel like the counselors aren't communicating that. Very, I apologize for any counselors in here, but <laughs> if there's, they need to kind of communicate that better to students because the students will go to them for help and sometimes they'll help, but it's just, it's an issue to, the, there's an issue with the counselors, I don't know how else to put it, but sorry. I, I think what a lot of the students wanted to know is that the counselors are gonna be reaching out to them and they don't always have to be reaching out to you, that you'll always be there for them when they need help. Any, okay, anybody else? All right. Um, there was also another um, a suggestion that was brought up downstairs. I just want to throw this out that there was a student who asked, you know, what can I tell a counselor that's not going to get told to somebody else so they don't know the policies that, that was brought up. So I wanted to throw that out that they're interested in what the policy is on when they disclose information, who, who finds out, and what the consequences are. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, that was, a, that was a big problem that was pointed out a lot. Um, and just lack of information in general that kids receive from their counselors. Um, when kids aren't informed about the services that are offered or the functions of the counselor in the first place, then there's no way for them to, to help themselves or even put themselves in a position where they can receive any um, aid that they need. All right, All right thank you. Okay, the, uh, the next topic <clears throat> is about, uh, it's about class size, and that uh, maybe the classes are too big, and there's no way to make a close connection. So who would like to start with a close connection with, with somebody in your school? I know that some people talked about ELO or Encore. Well, I'm, everyone had agreed when we said that in elementary school and middle school, you always have this close connection to your teachers. So you always feel you know, that they'll be there for you. But once you get into that high school transition, the teachers instead of more wanting, because your classes are so big. I know my biggest class is 35 people, and that's my science class. And it's just huge, and, and people have, ish, oh, I totally just lost my train of thought. <laughs> no, it's okay. That's okay. <laughs> okay. When, I think when you have a really big class, it's harder to kind of, like there may, there's some dumb questions that may come up, as teachers call, would maybe call them, where uh, a teacher may assume a student knows something, and when you're in a larger class, it's really difficult to be like, I don't get it, but you know what I mean? Because kids will kind of, maybe they'll laugh or something. So having a smaller class, it gets more of like a, almost like a family and you get, it's a lot closer and better, so. This is sort of different, well it's different, but, well, okay. <laughs> You can want smaller classes. I've been to big schools and small schools, and I find small schools, small classes are a lot better. But at times, you can't always have that. At times, the schools are too big. You have to have big classes, not enough teachers. So if you could just, like, create programs after school to where you have, like, maybe if you have two or three history teachers, just see if one of them want to stay a day after a week, just every day. Like, have a place where you can go after school be like, hey, I didn't get this. Can you explain it? It might not be the teacher you have but it's still a teacher in that subject and that will help a lot. I mean, a lot of students will reach out to that and if they don't, they're not 
grasping the opportunity to take our part and your guys' part to make a difference. Big classes are too hard. Small classes make little programs to where we can get the help we need and not just assume that we're understanding it all because I'm a slow learner. And um, yeah, I have to have extra help. So that's what a lot of students need. They may not speak out about it, but they do need it. You just need to find the students that need the help. And yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, our next topic is um, teachers are stereotyping. And I know that there was a little bit of that talked, uh, talked about earlier, but I know that there was a, a pretty big consensus downstairs that that's happening. Um, and a lot of students are feeling, feeling that. So who would like to speak on? That issue. Um, well, I don't, uh, let's see. Uh, one way to maybe solve that, because it is definitely happening, I know it is, like around, downstairs they kind of erupted when we brought that up. Um, so maybe a solution would be in the hiring process um, where you can kind of, I don't know how you do it, but somehow have like a part of an interview where you can bring up some issues and how their, not how their views are on it, but how they, how do they stereotype and I think you guys get what I'm saying. I just think one of the main things that most of the kids are asking is that just try to be as open-minded as you can be because they all just want the opportunity to be equal for each student. So just be open-minded to their suggestions and just try to listen to what they have to say too because Everybody, the teachers say they know what's best for us, but sometimes we do know what's best for us, and it's just a matter of putting our ideas together and just making a decision but based on both of our ideas. Okay. Anybody else on that topic? Okay. Um, the next, <clears throat> excuse me, the next topic is punishment or discipline, um, and how it's affecting the dropout rate um, and just the consequences. So who would like to start? Uh, okay. uh, I feel like the teachers, they're so quick to kick you out of class if you're trying to have a conversation with them. If they feel that they are not in the adult place, if they feel that they're in the wrong, they're quick to kick you out of class or write you up and then you're in trouble. Like, I mean, they should be more sensitive to your needs, like understanding. Um, one thing I notice is there is a kid that goes to other high school, and he has to take his little sister to school every day. So, and I am sometimes he is a kid that wants to learn, and sometimes it's hard to get to school on time every day for him. And he had, I think, five tardies in the morning. He got ISS. And the thing is, how can you learn in, when you're in ISS? They, I mean, sometimes that's where I think where counselors come into play. They need to help you work out a schedule that's best for you instead of this kid isn't a bad kid. He, he wants to learn. They send him an ISS. And I mean, they give you work, but you're missing out on the class time. So it, it's just, I don't think it's a little solution. Putting a kid in ISS, that's not going to help him learn. And that's not going to make him get to school any faster either. Yeah. So yeah. I, just a solution that will work for everyone, I think. Yeah, um, that's something we talked about. It's just like the whole, the whole policy of punishment is sort of oxymoronic in its nature. Um, if when a kid's acting up and he might not be that interested in school, then taking him out of classes isn't going to solve any of those problems and it, it's not going to solve his behavior either. It, um, and so one of the things that we talked about is, you know, possibly when a kid is um, behaving some way that would not necessarily be favorable, um, then um, as as disciplinarians and um, and also counselors too, you need to figure out um, what is actually the root of the problem and try and um, help students on a more case by case basis instead of slapping on a detention or ISS and just taking them out of classes and try, um, removing them from the situation entirely because taking when you're trying to get somebody to go to classes um, and if you punish them by taking them out of classes, then that's um, the exact opposite. 